My name is Chris Thurgood. I'm a botanist and a fellow of the Linnaean Society where I'm standing now, in the vault below London city streets. We often think of plants as inanimate because they don't necessarily move in real time, but actually there are a number of plants that dupe, drug and even kill other animals. We're going to look at a really fascinating orchid, the broadleaved hellebreen, Epipactis hellebreeni. Now the Epipactis genus is a group of about 70 or 80 species of orchid that grow in temperate and some subtropical areas. Like many plants, this orchid produces a sugary nectar which is attractive to insects. But what's unusual about the hellebreen is that when scientists observed wasps visiting the flowers of this plant, they noticed that they behave very strangely. They become sluggish and almost act as if they're drunk. And when scientists analysed the nectar that this plant produces, they found that it contains substances called alkaloids, which have a narcotic or hallucinogenic effect. Scientists identified a compound called oxycodone, an addictive narcotic that's also used in pain medication. And this may be one of a cocktail of compounds that seems to be getting the wasps drunk. And believe it or not, scientists have actually isolated alcohol from the nectar of these flowers as well. Now it may be that wasps, after visiting ripening fruit, are transferring microorganisms to the nectar of these flowers. And these microorganisms will then feed on the sugar in the nectar and produce alcohol. So it could actually be that the wasps, through infecting these flowers with microorganisms, are actually unwittingly getting themselves drunk. The wasps become sluggish, and this means they'll spend longer on a given plant, which increases the probability that they'll either pick up pollen or deliver it. And secondly, like other orchids, Epipactis dispenses its pollen in discrete packets. Now for a flying insect like a wasp, these could potentially be a bit of a burden of which it will try to rid itself. A disoriented wasp is less likely to be able to groom itself and free itself from these packets of pollen, and this means that it's more likely to deliver these to another plant and bring about cross-pollination. So how did such a strange relationship in which an orchid gets a wasp drunk ever evolve? It may be that on the dingy forest floor in late summer, which is when these plants flower, that wasps are the most reliable pollinator. But really, scientists are only starting to scratch the surface of this highly complex and unique interaction.